loving what you're hearing? Well, the establishment hates it. And right now, they're conjuring up new ways to try and censor RCR. To ensure you never miss a beat of the hard-hitting news you've come to know and love, make sure you're on the RCR mailing list. Get connected now at realitycheck.radio forward slash email. We've all been watching how the police have been arresting people in the UK for the high crimes of saying rude or intemperate things on social media. And we've been sitting watching and wondering how on earth this can happen. And yet exactly the same menacing behaviour from police is happening right here in New Zealand. Our next guest is one of those who has had a visit from the police over comments on X. You know, used to be called Twitter, but it's called X now. So let's see what he has to say now. With me now is Gareth, who is the owner, for want of a better term, of the X account, Nob Oddy. Welcome, Gareth. Yeah, good day, Cam. And uh, uh, that's that is the former X account, Nob Body. That the account is deleted. It's a bit of a shame that it's deleted because um, you had a bit of an incident uh, where you had some of the constabulary tip up at your house at night. Uh, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, well, actually, it was a uh, Thursday night at uh, six thirty p.m. We had a knock on the door, and there was two uniformed officers there. Uh, <laughs> I didn't really want to engage with them. Um, I wasn't really keen on even opening the door. But uh, my wife opened the door, um, and I was standing right next to her. And they said, are you Gareth? I said, yes. And they said, can I come in? And I said, no, thank you. And then from that point, I recorded the entire conversation. And like, were they armed? Did, did they appear to be armed to you? Uh, well... I, I saw that they both had tasers on their chest. I didn't look too closely if they had any further weapons. Yeah, but you were in shock. Uh, definitely in shock. I mean, the last time I had two uniformed officers turn up to my door, they uh, took me away in handcuffs for a crime I didn't commit. So I don't, I don't really have the uh, the highest faith in police. No. And and what did they want to have a chat with you about? I mean, I've seen the video. Uh, well, let's just talk about it for the. Yeah, might not have seen the video on Simon Anderson's Twitter account or X account. Yes, well, as you can see, well, if you've seen the video, see, they're not very forthcoming with why they're at the door and why they've knocked. I mean, I've always been of the impression that if I ever knocked on a door that I'd have to explain my presence to whoever answered it. Yeah. But um, these police officers didn't appear to want to follow that, you know, common courtesy, I'd call it. Um, and they wanted me to ask them why they were at the door, and they kept on they kept on uh, trying to engage with me. Um, initially, they said, "Oh, can I? If I can't come in, can I email you instead?" And I said, "No, thank you." Mm-hmm. And they were looking around sheepishly, seeing that they're recorded. And then the the female officer said, "Well, how about I leave my details?" And I said, "Well, no, thank you." Just giving them plenty of opportunity to explain why they're there. Yeah, and uh, that wasn't forthcoming. Um, they started saying, oh, this is really awkward. Surely you must have some questions about why the police have knocked on your door at night. <laughs> I said, well, no, <laughs> no, thank you. Normally it goes the other yeah, way. You, They're usually telling you, you we ask so. questions and you give the answers. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was rather strange. It really threw me for six, mate. I thought, you know, something dodgy is going on here. Like they, They're not forthcoming. They're not explaining themselves. So you might, you might just... Races, right? I've got like kids in my house, I've got my wife here. What are they doing at my door? Yeah, yeah. And so um, anybody would feel the same way. What, what the hell are they doing here? And it sounds very suspicious. Incredibly suspicious for me. But in the end, um, when when I didn't want to engage, the female officer was saying, "Look, we're just trying to get your side of the story. We're trying to do you a favour before you know." It's basically, if you're not talking to me, there's consequences. That's what she, her message was. Mm, and I'm trying to see it. Definitely an implied threat. But not only that, is my wife was at the door, right? Yeah. And she just wants to know why the police are there. Yeah, yeah she's very enough. concerned. Mm. Uh, me personally, I, I follow, you know, the likes of Simon Anderson and others who deal with the police constantly. And I'm, I wasn't so worried about why they were there. I knew if they had evidence or a warrant, there would be no conversation. It would be straight in the handcuff, straight in the car, and off you go. Mm. So I wasn't too concerned that I was in trouble. So I wasn't too concerned about why they were there. But I knew that if I came back into the house without that information, 
my wife would be very concerned that I wouldn't be having a very peaceful time. So I, I did ask them, I said, can you please explain why you were turned up at my front door without a warrant to talk to me? Mm. And that's on the video. And she walks over like she's my friend. Oh, 100%, I can explain, 100%. Uh, someone has just notified the Firearm Safety Authority of some comments you've been making on social media. And I said, hold on, I've got an anonymous account on social media that posts jokes. And it's basically a troll account, you know, inflammatory, you know, getting a rise out of people, but also funny. You've had a go at me. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> well, I definitely have, Cam, and I think you deserved it, but you definitely gave it back as good as you got anyway, mate. Exactly. <laughs> it's just a few stroppy words on, on X, you know, who cares? Exactly, mate. We've all got bigger things in our lives than a couple of stroppy words on X. Um. So yeah, so so but, what you've got now is the police turning up at your house while you're having dinner with the family, interrupting that, mm -hmm. being cagey about why they're there, and then finally admitting that um, it's because of some intemperate or rude um, uh, posts on it, and the firearms safety authority is involved. This all sounds rather ominous. Yes. It does sound ominous, and they did not make it clear at the time that nothing was done illegal or, you know, they weren't investigating a crime. They, they made it seem quite serious that I had done something serious. It was only after I'm like, hold on, like, have I done something Ill illegal? And they're like, no, you haven't done anything illegal. And it's like, well, hold on, how are you even investigating then? How did you get the information from an anonymous account, track it down to my house, if no laws have been broken? Well, it raises a question that uh, where they got that information from and whether or not they had a valid warrant to get that information. If it's an anonymous account, I mean, the only way they could have tracked you down is to have asked mm -hmm. the for the mobile phone that was associated with that account and mm -hmm. to have gone to your phone provider or whoever had the account for that phone. And it could, you know, I guess it could be anything with, with number portability uh, and then obtain mm -hmm. information from them. So from from how I understand police work, you just can't go on a fishing expedition. They need to have some sort of warrantable information that is available that then allows them to come to your house. But again, if this is a safety issue, if this is um, you know a, our person at risk because there's firearms in the house or something like that, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be coming in and having a nice friendly chat. But like, you know, you have... No. The grinning Cheshire cat partner is, you know, several steps back, butting in in the in the video and going, "Oh, look, come on, mate, you know, just, you know, you could just tell us your side of the story." Well, they haven't told the other side yes. of the story. So, so, so what the hell? No, are they no, there was no. Yeah, there was no actual. I don't know what tweet this is about, or if it was multiple tweets, or, or I, don't, I still don't know what it's about, right? And which makes it very hard for other people to defend me, right? Because. I've seen the comments as well under the videos on YouTube and things, and people are saying, well, what did he say? Well, how can I answer? I don't know what I said. Mm. And it does make people cagey to defend someone's speech if they don't know what was said. But all I know is that the cops said it wasn't illegal and they're not investigating a crime. And if I knew that about any one statement, I would support their statement. You know, yeah. I'm a big free speech supporter. I mean, you know, <laughs> and there's lots of things that people say that I disagree with. As a radio host. I still support them to say it. Yeah, exactly. As a radio host, you know, I've got a assess whether or not, you know, you've said anything like you're going to kill immigrants or anything or someone should go on suicide or anything. You haven't posted anything like that that, that I've ever no. experienced. I mean, you, you chip away at people's statements and you might call them stupid or, or that was ridiculous or whatever, but there's nothing that's yes. a harm sort of a thing that, that would warrant the police coming around and doorstepping you at dinner time. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, that's definitely not my personality, mate. I'm not a, a threat or, you know, type of guy. I do like to have arguments, and even if they are quite contentious ones. You know, mm. um, my personal philosophy, I mean, <sighs> you're aware of Jordan Peterson's Kathy Newman interview where he says, in order to be able to think, you must risk being offensive, right? I've yeah. always risked being offensive to, in pursuit of the truth. That is my style. Yeah, I'm Definitely. And I don't doubt that I've posted many, many offensive things. Some of them even offensive to myself. But <laughs> I, I do, I do believe I've acted fully within the law at all times. And it's, it's just, you know, if you've thought about a topic and you haven't offended yourself, you just haven't thought about the topic deeply enough. That's my belief. Mm.
Well, it's an interesting take on things and it's kind of what how I operate and what I've been doing for the last 20 years. Put a, a controversial uh, position out there and, and then fight your corner. Um, and, and, and yeah, it, even if you don't believe in it, though, you, yeah. you can still fight the argument to, to get to the truth. That's right. And, and so mm. what we've got here is, I mean, what I was stunned with is this policewoman saying, well, you, you, you realise that you're, uh, you know, you've are you got a firearms licence, which is an implied threat. We're here on your doorstep because you've got a firearms licence. And you've said yep. some mean things or some things on X. And have you considered um, the regulations regarding, um, you know, your obligations as a fit and proper person, which is a second threat? Yes, but all, exactly. And all of that is actually illegal because the Arms Act doesn't define what a fit and proper person is. It doesn't, doesn't mm. define what your obligations are as a fit and proper person other than mm. for the law. And if yeah. you're only putting things on Twitter that's uh, your personal opinion, you know, which is protected by the Bill of Rights Act, uh, mm-hmm. you're not breaking any law. You're, you're voicing an opinion, and it, it might not be one that's accepted by too many people or any people at all, but it's your opinion, and yeah. you're putting it out there. Mm-hmm. And these guys are coming around and knocking on your door and saying, we don't like your opinions, and we're going to hold it against you for your firearms licence, because that – Linking those two things together, that's what it looks like to me. Is is that how you felt? Oh, definitely. Definitely that's how I felt. Like it, it was definitely an implied threat, and that, that's pretty much why I deleted the account. I mean, my wife is, was pretty scared. I was pretty scared. And I was like, mate, I can't have this ever happen again, so I'm just going to be, be quiet from now on. I'm not going to post anything online. You know, I've got my family to think about, and we can't have the police doorstepping me every time they think I've got a, a naughty tweet. But that's... um. That's that's what's called the chilling effect. That's called censorship. Yeah, yeah, but what do you want me to do about it? I mean, I'm, I'm just a one regular Kiwi battler, can you know? I can't no. take on the whole bloody government. No, you can't. But you know, in my view, watching the the interaction with the police, you handled everything really well. Um, you you asked them what they were here for. You asked them if you were under arrest or being detained. The answers were negative in every respect. The police actually had yeah. no business being there given that they answered in the negative for all of those questions that you raised. And so it is a chilling yeah. effect, and you've kind of done the right thing by speaking out and videoing it and putting it out on the internet to show people what is going on uh, in our policing. I mean, the Free Speech Union has has raised just in the last week the fact that police have got this hate speech training for their officers, and this seems very much mm-hmm. to that. Yeah, that's what I thought. I did hear, I think it was Mark Mitchell saying that there's no such thing as a hate hub or something last week, like at the, pretty much the same time that um, Simon Anderson was releasing, releasing this clip. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think, I don't know if the media is being deliberately obtuse here, but if you ask Mark Mitchell if there's a hate hub, of course you're going to say no, because it's not called the hate hub, right? We, we have to ask him, is, are the police investigating non-crime hate incidents? That's what they're referred to where they are being enforced in Scotland and England and Wales. They're called non-crime hate incident. And that's why the police attended here. So it's clearly, I mean, the Fire and Safety Authority can get police to attend a non-crime. And, you know, if my site loses a $70,000 elevated work platform, I can't even get the police to turn up. You know, it's, 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 it is basically a two-tier system where the government can investigate you for non-crimes but if you report a crime, you, you've got no hope. You've got no hope for help. Well, we've, we've all been watching things going on in the UK where grannies are being arrested for something that they said on Twitter about, you know, immigrant, violent immigrants protesting, and all of a sudden they're banged up in prison. Are, are we heading, do you think we're heading for that in New Zealand? Because, yeah. You know, oh, definitely. And you, you could tell because of this firearms registry has created some sort of hate hub in the vernacular we call it, right? Because clearly you can report non-crimes to them and they'll investigate. So there's only a matter of time before the the state's going to expand that, clearly. I mean, you wouldn't just have that and not expand. Everything the state does, it expands. And I'd say within a few years, I mean, in England, they didn't start arresting people on Twitter. They started with coming around and checking on your thinking. And then within a few years, it was arrest. 
So that, I'd that, say one follows you, the other. Yeah, and that's what you've had here. They've come around to get your side of the story. How, yes. How long is it Definitely. going to be before um, they arrest you first to get your side of the story? Uh huh. It's it has been chilling, mate. It's been very chilling. Uh, it's, it's affected me quite badly. You know, I'm struggling to sleep because it's like, what are they doing in the background? Like, you know, are the police investigating me still secretly? You know, it's it's pretty chilling. And as a result, that your voice has been lost from X, and you know, there might be some people out there who would say, you know, the same thing about me, or that that's a good thing that you've gone from X. But any time a voice yeah, is, sure time is not a good time, you know, and that's the way I'm looking at it. Yeah. Looking like your voice has been silenced by two police officers intimidating you on your doorstep. Yeah, and let, let's just clarify. I mean, this isn't a massive X account. I mean, I, I was following 1,500 people. I might have had 1,200 followers. It's not like it's got a massive reach. It's yeah. You know, it's not like it's a threat to national security or something. You know, it's, it's one person's opinion that might get seen a few hundred times by my followers. It, it makes didn't me, seem makes me wonder though. Were there no burglaries to attend to, or um, domestic violence um, incidents, or drunk people at the pub, or you know, any multitude of crimes that are out there? You know, they've said to you, you're not under investigation, except yet they here they mm-hmm. are. They've said to you, you just, they're not, they're not, um, there's no crime, you're not being arrested, you're not being detained. Well, why were they there then? Do they, you know, do, does the policing manual allow for two constables to attend somebody's house for mean tweets? Because that's what it looks like. Well, I don't know if the policing manual allows it, but Costa and Mark Mitchell definitely allow it. They'll take no actions about, against this, and they'll uh, give you empty platitudes if you've asked them. Well, you know, Mark Mitchell, of course, is a former police officer, so he's part of the team. Doesn't doesn't matter that oh, he's, I see. You know, he's and he's a former police officer. So he, once they're in the blue family, they stay in the blue family. Yes, it does seem to be a bit of a club, right? Now, I'll, I'll take this up directly with Mark Mitchell, but it is concerning that you know, seemingly, I mean, I, I mean, I've been a victim of a similar thing where somebody contacted the police and. You know, falsely claimed that there was a you know a family harm incident that could be underway at my house. I get two armed police officers turn up at my house, and you're right, it is disconcerting. I mean, that that's the reason why uh, I got hold of you because uh, I know exactly what you've been through, and it seems that yeah, and I would have people out there that will use these systems, in this case, the Firearm Safety Authority, to then get some police to give you a visit. It almost seems personal. Uh, Potentially, it could be personal. I didn't know anyone I was following personally. Uh, I never met anyone I'd talk to online, face to face. And it'd be very few people who'd be able to recognise me from my blacked out photos in the profile. You know, I had my face yeah. completely blacked out, and anyone's faces blacked out in any sort of images that were on there. You'd really have to know me quite well to uh, to pick it from that. So I'm I'm leaning more towards it was a police investigation that led there. But firstly, Cam, just what you when you led into there about contacting me, I want to say thank you very much for contacting me and the uh, little bits of advice you have given me. Um, that that was a, a great help in me and my family proceeding through the situation that happened to us. It's it's not pleasant, and uh, if you've got uh, this is the the thing the reason why I take up this case. Uh, and talking to you and, and talking to and going to be talking to Colfo uh, about this is is that I have a view that if you've got a voice and you've got an ability to make a, a, an argument or a point about something, in this case, overreach of the police, that you almost have an obligation to to say that as loud as you can, in this case on a radio show uh, you know, and, and yeah. on my website. Mm-hmm that the police don't do this to other people? Look, I, I'm more than happy to say this on any conventional media. I, I'm never again going to post my opinion on social media. I cannot put up with the police coming around to my house to harass me. And and I'm happy enough to... I'll, I'll go on with Mark Mitchell and ask him directly, mate, what the hell are you guys doing coming to my house when no crime's been committed to terrify my family? Yeah. But I'm, I'm happy enough to do that directly. What I won't ever do again, thanks to the actions of the New Zealand police, is post my opinion online. Well, that's a breach of the human rights. 
Act. It's a be- be- breach of the Bill of Rights. They have silenced you. They've taken your voice away through fear and intimidation, which means that you know, a lot of listeners in, on radio will be sitting here thinking, well, we know what that looks like because we were down there in Wellington getting bashed by the police for, yeah. the, but for simply standing up to the government. And, and here you are being yeah. silenced for daring to have intemperate, let's use those words, intemperate views mm-hmm. on a social yes. media platform. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I, even if it is a breach of the Human Rights and Bill of Rights and all that, there's nothing an individual can do against the state. Uh, well, at least in my case, mate. Maybe if we've got a, a big following like you, if you're a, or, you know, if you, well, you probably, you know, you've worked hard to get the following you've got, so... You know, you you might have a bit more sway, you know, more eyes on you. Oh, it's just me, mate. It's just me and my family, and um, it's not you know, just, I've got enough not, on my plate. Yeah, but but Gareth, it's not just you and your family, right? There's a whole lot of people that are listening to this show right now, who who will feel exactly the same way, and will you know support you in standing up to the police in this manner. It's it's hard. I, I know I've done it, but what I've found in dealing with the police mm. is that if you make a huge ruckus and make things hard yeah. for them and embarrassing, they tend to leave you alone. And there's far, too, far too many people in New Zealand who think because um, the police say something that they've got a right to say that or they've got the law behind them to say that and then comply. And what I've found oh, I don't... interaction with the police is that they'll break the law in order to catch you. Yes. Oh, that's that's you know I fully agree with that, but I'm not sure it's um it's exactly how you put it. I'd say it's more a, a fear, and it's probably a valid uh, fear that you can have of the state and the police because of the massive power imbalance, right? Like it's not an irrational fear. Well, is it, you know it is a fear. I mean, I, I I know what it's like to have two armed police officers, even if it's just tasers. I mean, nobody wants to be shot with one of those. Turn up to your house no. unannounced to talk about something that they can't even elucidate. And, you know, here we mm-hmm. are um, over a week later and you still are no um, better informed from the police visiting. So it can't mm-hmm. be that important, right? Can't have been that important yeah. because otherwise you'd know about it. Surely, right? I mean... Yeah, I can't. I can't see how if it was important enough last Thursday, that this Thursday we still don't know why they were here. Yeah, and, and therefore it can't be that important. In which case, why did they visit? In which case, what operational concerns were there? I mean, you know, if you wanted to dig into it, or you probably don't. It's a fight that you don't want to have to have, and it'll cost you money and time and effort and loss of sleep mm-hmm. and all those sorts of things. But there are questions that mm-hmm. are in mind. What is the actual issue here that was more important than dealing with the bashing of a granny down the road. Exactly. I mean, it, it can't have been that important, right? No. <laughs> so, yeah. But as I say, mate, I mean, I, I know there are Kiwis out there who are very, you know, who, who would support me in this, and I see their comments under the videos. Um, I do appreciate that reaction because, you know, you could be, they can tell that, like, hey, we, we're not happy to be in the situation. We're quite intimidated, and the police just won't tell us why they're there, and they just continue to engage in a conversation unwantedly instead of just stating, hey, we are here because you said naughty words, and then I can just close the door, right? I know why they're there. Sorry, mate. Bang. You know? Yeah. Until they tell me that, I've got to stand there and engage with them as to why they are there. Which so, is what they want, you know, and, and it's my view that the police engage in these sorts of things to catch you out, in which case the best policy is the policy you enacted. Say as little as possible, ask direct questions. Am I being detained? Am I under arrest? Yeah. Right? What Are you, are you yep. charging with anything? What are you here for? If they yep. can't answer those, then you do what you did and shut the door. Go away. Yes. And do it politely. Yep. Don't give them an excuse. Right? This is advice yep. for listeners. If you are ever approached by the police in this sort of situation, don't don't get upset. Turn your camera on, record everything, so that there's there's no he said, she said. You know, if yeah. it, if it ends up anywhere, you know, involving courts or anything like that, you've you've actually got video evidence of the of the 
encounter, be polite, but be firm and know your rights. You know, yeah, in, well, I said my, my, my pleases and thanks to you. Yeah, I know. It was, you were very pleasant in that video. You know, in my case, I, I simply said to the police officers, well, your reason to come to my house is stipulated by law, and the law says you have to give me seven days' notice of that, and you haven't given me seven days' notice, so you can leave. Yes. <laughs> right? Now, well, I, know I mean, if you know the law, then yeah. <laughs> I know people in my club uh, you know, in, in antique arms who said, who say to me when they hear the story and they said, oh, you're brave. I said, well, what would you have done? Would you have allowed them to break the law? Because I won't allow the police to break the law. Mm. Right. Which I think does make you brave, though, mate. <laughs> maybe you don't recognise it. Well, I don't know, mate. Brave or stupid, I don't know. Well, maybe the... <laughs> Maybe maybe the listeners can uh, text that in. Is Cam brave or stupid? You know, one. Yeah, from- tell me the poll at the end, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I I, I really feel for you. I've been in a similar situation. I know what it's like uh, when the big blue gang turns up, and uh, they've got the resources yes. of the state behind them, and uh, effectively threatening uh, or you know obtusely accusing you of something that you don't know what it is and they're hoping that you'll tell them and hang yourself because that's exactly that's that's what it looked like that they were trying to do. yeah and in saying that it's not only that it's the embarrassment mate i mean i was very embarrassed posting that video i mean no one wants to show the world that you got cops on your front door you know um i had to tell you know one of my bosses hey this has happened to me just in case he's wondering why i'm a bit missing in action at work um you know, it's quite an embarrassing situation. That it's not really of your making. Yeah, I didn't commit any crimes, but now I've got to share this you know, this information with people. That hey, the police have turned up on my door. Uh, it's it, yeah, it is embarrassing. That's what I'd say. It does raise uh, you know? I know you're seeking legal advice. Uh, it, there may be an avenue mm-hmm. there. It does raise some questions. You know, as I've said, how did they get your details? There could have actually been a privacy breach here. You know, at least from the uh, from the telecommunications company that supplies your, you know, your mobile number and, and account, they they given the numbers out to the police. Did they do it with a warrant? Was was, mm. was well, the valid? You know, a mate of mine, um, he had mm. his house raided, and uh, when he saw the warrant, he saw that it had expired three days earlier, and wow, everything they took out of his house in that raid. And it was something, nothing. He was never charged with anything. Uh, everything had yeah. back, and he got an apology from the police because the warrant had expired. So the police are quite oh, willing yeah. to break the law to, to get what they want. And I I really question whether they've, uh, you know, how they obtained a warrant. Did they get it from a, a judge or did they get the warrant from, you know, some patsy, uh, you know, JC um, that they told a story to? Because to get the information from an anonymous Twitter account, suggests that they had to go through several steps to get that? Um, look, I'm no expert on this, but uh, I've got a Freedom of Information Request Act in to the police, and hopefully that will provide some clarity. And I'm more than willing to share that with you, Cam, no matter what's in it, uh, because of your help you've given me and, and the exposure. And I, I want you to be fully <laughs> prepared as well, because you've you've stuck your neck out on the line. And I don't know what it's in it, right? So neither do you. So, but um. Yeah, in saying that, I thought this five eyes situation we're in, where um, the government can just go to, say, Australia or Canada and say, hey, mate, can you search in my body and tell me all the details? Yeah. Um, and then no no laws are broken because the Australians are spied and they're just passing information on to New Zealand. So no warrants are required, right? And yeah. and we, we get our, our civil rights are bypassed. Yeah, that, that, that that's a valid concern. There'd be many people out there would... Be sitting here nodding, going, mm, "Yeah, that that's a possibility." Um, but that, and then that mm. raises the Big Brother type aspects. Uh, are we going to witness the extension of these sorts of powers uh, uh, under the guise of protecting us all, uh, and end up in a similar situation where you're getting grannies arrested because they said something mean on on Twitter or X or Facebook? Yeah, well, that's, oh, as far as I'm concerned, that's the inevitable future, which is, uh, you know, kind of depressed me over the last last week when you're raising kids in a country that you think, geez, when they're my age, 
you know, will it be in a gulag, you know? Yeah, will be or will we have a social credit score system like they do in China? We can't even, you know, travel yeah. or buy anything because you've you've been said something rude against the regime. Oh come on! If there's a social credit score, mate, my kids will be in a gulag, mate. They won't be on the street. <laughs> I'll be educated by the state. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I I fully see us going that way. It's just we're following the UK pattern. When the UK brought in the hate speech laws, we brought in the guy who wrote the UK's hate speech laws yeah. and said, can you write ours? Well, Labour did, right? So yeah. you can see the pattern and the behaviour by the police is already happening. What's happening today, to, well, last week to me, was what was happening in England four or five years ago. And now look at what they're doing today. So, so, so yeah, we're, we're, a bit of a time frame. we're on a slippery slope and that's why it's important to tell these stories so that there's plenty of people mm-hmm. out there know what we are up against, and the only way that I can see to defeat it is to, you know, effectively, you know, point at the police and laugh at them, and uh, do a do a Nelson from The Simpsons, ha ha, and um and shame yeah. them into behaving properly. Yes, yeah. To be fair, Cameron, that's a very well. I've argued the same on Twitter that social shame is a very powerful motivator. Yeah. All right, and that probably is the only thing we have left as the public that we can actually use. Uh, against you know the police or the state in terms of uh, protecting our rights. Well, it's very important that people know their rights and they do stand up for for themselves when they're confronted by situations like this. And for that, I commend you. And I also commend you for having the guts to come on to this show and talk to me about a very stressful situation. For that, I appreciate it. Thank you. You're more than welcome, Cam, and thank you all for your, for your support over this, this tough time for me, mate. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're most welcome. All right, Gareth, I'll, I'll I'll leave you with that. You can go back to your family. I can hear them in the background there. So, uh, you know, go and give them a big hug because they've probably been a bit stressed. Yeah. yeah. No, well, I think they can see their dad a bit stressed, mate, which does does affect, impact the kids. So, But thank you very much, mate. I will go back to the kids now. All good, mate. Thank you for coming on The Crunch. Yes. You really have no comprehension of how stressful these situations can be, especially when the police arrived armed and with threats. And they make no mistake here. The police were threatening Gareth with loss of his firearms and licence, all for saying rude and intemperate things on X. Now, Gareth held the line, but if we don't call out this behaviour, it won't be long before we see similar scenes playing out just like they do in the UK but right here in New Zealand. What do you think? Email inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thank you for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. If you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to, either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We would love to hear from you, so connect with us today.